Hey guys, my name is Michael and welcome to this panel on the key to success. And we have a lot of wallets and ways to keep our cryptocurrency safe in this age. Now this panel, we have a lot of guests and I'll give everyone a chance to introduce themselves in a sec. But I just wanna introduce a panel and say that cryptocurrencies, there's a phrase going around saying, be your own bank, Bitcoin, be your own bank. And that's kind of intimidating sometimes. When I first saw that model, I'm so intimidated. How do I be my own bank? And relaying my experiences from 2012 early on, keeping your cryptocurrency safe has been extremely hard. But over these years, this has been a lot easier with the invention of both hardware wallets and, soft and better software wallets that you can keep your cryptographic keys safe. So I, for one, I've been one of those people who've lost keys all the way back on USB drives because I didn't know how to do it. But now things are much simpler, but we can make it even simpler still. And I think this is one of the major challenges going forward. So it's a great time to introduce our panels and talk about what this session is going to be about. So let's start off with Victor. Can you do a mini introduction about who you are and what you're trying to do in this space? Hey, Michael. Yeah, so my name is Victor and I'm a founder of Trust Wallet. So we're mainly focused on a couple of uh, things that we're trying to do in crypto is making crypto safe and accessible. So that's been something in my passion for the past three years when I started uh, learning into crypto. Yeah, that's pretty much my introduction. Awesome. Then we have Veronica Wong from SafePal. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Veronica from SafePal. Uh, I'm the CEO and the co-founder. And we are trying to make crypto secure and simple for the masses, especially for those who uh, has recently entered the crypto space without any basic or professional knowledge about what crypto is and what blockchain is. Uh, we, th we feel it's important to make crypto accessible to many people, uh, regardless of how you know about crypto. Yeah, that's what we do. Thank you. Nice. So we also have Matt Marks, the co-founder of Fishport. Thanks, Michael. Uh, yeah, I'm Matt. I'm the co-founder of Fishfort, and at Fishfort, we are combating phishing and scams uh, in the crypto industry. Awesome. And lastly, Constantin from Atomic Wallet. Hey, everyone. Yes, I'm the CEO and the founder of Atomic Wallet. It's a non-custodial wallet application for mobile, for desktop. Uh, so we have a half million downloads across all the world. And our main goal is to make crypto as, as easy for everyone as we can. And even your grandmother can use crypto. <laughs> That's all. And secure. Awesome. And definitely one of the themes in our introductions, obviously, is making cryptos easier to use. Because obviously, one of the elements is your private key, which gives anyone complete access to cryptocurrencies and the entire balance if they have that key. And obviously, making that easier to use and to store safely has been one of the challenges that has been coming and facing. So I think for the first question to throw out there, how do we make things easier to use, but at the same time, allow people to retain that full control of the key? How, how is that possible? And what are the challenges and the, kind of the challenges that to overcome in the space? And I'll leave that. I guess we'll start off in order if, um, if everyone wants to start. I mean, we can start off with Victor first and then we'll rotate in a corner and then we'll uh, talk about that in a discussion. Yeah, totally. I think, you know, when we talk about the private keys, it's um, all about kind of like a balance between security and also simplicity. Um, and you basically need to draw a line between, you know, different private keys. Uh, we usually consider them to be like as a cold storage or a hot storage. So in which sense, you know, some keys could be stored offline without, you know, anyone touching it. And then there is, you know, software wallets that have, you know, hot uh, private keys, which means they have some connection to the Internet. So in this case, you know, it's all about, you know, how much security do you want to have? Uh, do you want to keep large amounts of uh, amounts of uh, crypto on your wallet or not? And so this is where, you know, every kind of company trying to do different approaches in terms of different products. So there's company who are building like a hardware wallets, who is optimizing for like larger amounts of crypto. And there's all the products that are trying to build software wallets that optimizes mostly for like simplicity because, you know, you keep everything on your phone. You know, it's exposed to different kind of problems. Um, and so that's where we as developers trying to like find a better design on how to build a better storage for the private keys itself. Is there any challenges you came across though? I mean, I think one of the issues I think a lot of people saw is 
do you ask users to save their private key first, write it down first, or do you feel like you have to compromise here and let them create the wallet and then eventually push them to save and back it up? Yeah, definitely. I think the main problem is the new paradigm, right? So if you look at like Web 3.0 or 2.0, where everyone had their email and a password that led people to access different websites. And so now people have a totally different paradigm where you don't need to have email. You actually just need to have this like uh, magic 12 words that allows you to access your account. So in this case, you know, we as like Trust Wallet, we're trying to like protect the users um, because if we don't protect the users, then, you know, they kind of put the blame on us. So our main goal is like educate users and give them guidance on what these private keys are. Um, and we don't usually call them private keys. We just say like, oh, this is your recovery phrase that allows you to get back um, to your wallet. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's all about like simplification of the wording to make sure people understand the importance of this so they can keep it secure uh, in places where others don't have access to. But it's definitely been a challenge because for most people, then they kind of take it for granted. They're like, oh, uh, it's some phrases. I can just recover them later. Um, but then in the end, they actually lose access to the fund. So it's very important to put really good focus on it and just you know, always kind of put everything in a red font that says like, you need to back this up or you're going to lose everything. Got it. And how about um, coming from Veronica? Did you guys have any challenges in, in this process as well? Yes, uh, fundamentally, uh, I think security and uh, convenience are conflicted to each other, especially when you are uh, uh, pumping the popularity of crypto wallet into the uh, internet generation. Uh, you are facing with uh, users from different backgrounds and knowledge level about this industry. And most people we get in touch with are not familiar with uh, the importance of private key even or so uh, we face a lot of challenges of building a secure but also easy to use wallet for the users so it, it would be more complex for a hardware wallet like safepal because uh, security as we talked about has uh, many layers for example in, at the bottom layer you have a hardware architect and on top of that you have the a software and firmware running on top of the hardware architect. And also based on top of that, you still have the UI and UX running in, in your app or in your hot end uh, to help people to manage their own addresses or account details. And last but not least, you also have, you need to have a responsible uh, users who are educated enough uh, to manage their own bank, to be their own bank. So when we talk about security, there are a lot of uh, different layers in this whole architect so for now to this year uh, we have been two years in this industry so right now the majority of the security cases or threats that we have come across mostly come from user education so we we have a lot of user inquiries asking that yeah your wallet is quite easy to use but i i i, I mistakenly transfer some vet to some v to, to the vn address can i retrieve my asset back i, I guess most of most of the wallet have this kind of user cases so we think uh, user education is right now the most urgent part uh, to be focused on for most of the project teams in the blockchain space. And that's quite um, an interesting so, example because, um, you know, these rare cases do come about and sometimes because the projects themselves, they have a migration to mainnet and the projects yeah. themselves are going through difficulties. So you have to have two challenges, not only to teach people about cryptographic keys, but also to be aware of what a project is doing and how maybe a token migration is going to happen. And sometimes addresses even look the same. So I feel like that's a great example there about education, making sure everyone is well and aware. And I think it's a both from the wallet side and also project side to make sure everyone is aware of what's going on. So I definitely agree with that point on education. So going next to Mark, um, is there anything else that you noticed in the security and trade-off area where you're trying to get security, but you're also trying to get the masses on board? Yeah, thanks, Michael. I think, I think uh, both Veronica and Victor have, have raised some really big concerns we have in the space. Uh, as, as a company that is full-time uh, finding and shutting down phishing attacks against crypto, um, I can, I can wholeheartedly agree with, with both what Victor said and, and Veronica in that, uh, you know, there's that trade-off and trying to make users understand uh, how important this private key is, the, uh, you know, just the recovery phrase of private key um, and that they shouldn't be giving this away. Uh, they shouldn't be handing this out to websites or uh, clicking on links and giving away the recovery phrases. Um, you know, that ties very much into the user education uh, aspect, which, which we've, we chatted about briefly. 
but I think I think more than that, uh, it really ties into to kind of a bigger picture here, which is that um, as as teams in crypto, I think we're building uh, I think we're building better and better and more secure products. So you know, we're getting penetration tested, we're getting security audits, we're open sourcing stuff, we've got bug bounties. Uh, but I think I think where uh, and that's fantastic, you know, take nothing away from that. But I think where perhaps we haven't been the best as an industry is bridging that next gap and saying, well, I've got a product and this product uh, doesn't just exist in a vacuum. It exists in my own ecosystem of users, power users, community members. Uh, and in fact, my ecosystem that my product lives in also interacts with a bunch of other product ecosystems. Um, and I think viewing things rather from an eco ecosystem security perspective, mm. uh, instead of just a product uh, security perspective is, is something we can probably probably work on and do better at as an industry. Awesome. I think that's a good point, especially with the rise of you know, decentralized finance or some sort of use case. Suddenly the ecosystem is becoming bigger and learning how to effectively manage your cryptocurrency keys. That's definitely important. So lastly, of Constantin, um, in your wallet as well, did you guys found any trade-offs? Do you think anything is extremely vital in pushing crypto adoption and managing security keys? Yeah, actually, I totally agree with the previous speakers and the biggest challenge is education. And so people, they don't understand that the transactions in crypto, it's, they are irreversible. Like, okay, and the crypto is all about be your own bank to control your funds with private keys on your wallet. And it's really the big one of the biggest advantages in crypto. Uh, but from the other side, if you send some funds, so it's irreversible. And you cannot just call your bank and say like, hello, please decline my transaction. And the same if you share your words to someone, 12 words to someone. So, okay, it's the same like share your credit cards to someone. And, but in this case, uh, you cannot decline all the transactions. And it's the biggest challenge for all, for all of us education. So first of all, you should uh, explain customers how to back up your private keys, your backup uh, phrase. And the next time, okay, so it's a blockchain. <laughs> you cannot decline transaction. <laughs> yeah, but so we found that the people, they are becoming smart with every steps. And even at the first step, they, they can lose some funds, but it's education and the next next uh the next larger deposits they understand how does crypto work and they are becoming happy that's really cool and okay so next up i think with a general discussion topic i mean it's uh, we've talked a lot about education but have we found any interesting ways to educate users because something that i found obviously i've been trying to preach um safety and security for the longest amount of time but sometimes people just aren't interested in that until something goes wrong. So how do you make people interested before they have to learn it the hard way? And I'll just open this up to you guys to discuss this. Yeah, I think from my experience, you know, it's always, you know, the best way to learn from mistakes, but I don't think you want to, you know, go through that with crypto because, you know, there's, it's irreversible. But in general, what I found, the best way to have kind of education is when crypto goes through adoption through friends. So when you actually learn from a friend, you get more knowledge and the friend is kind of responsible for education of the person who's, he's getting on board to. Uh, we did notice that whenever someone onboarded a person to crypto, they were much more well-educated than the people who were just, mm -hmm. you know, following some, you know, pump and dump schemes where they just wanted to make money. So it's definitely always like a social thing uh, to get people on board. And it's probably one of the most effective in my opinion at the moment. So as viewers, guys, you guys watch this video about safety and about how to secure things up. And we've always discussed this. So if you guys are talking to your friends, I think definitely uh, tell your friends about safety and security so they don't lose and learn by losing hundreds of thousands of dollars or <laughs> more coming into the space. Um, were there any other ways that you can make like fun, interesting, funny, cute videos or, or something like that? Have you guys tried that in the past? Yeah, like we have tried something like that. Uh, uh, it's, it's going quite well. So I, I call the strategy, I call it sweet and hammer. So <laughs> sweet, means sweet and that, hammer, uh, sweet and hammer. Hammer means that we need to some, at some point, we need to threat people. We need to tell them in, in front of them, what could happen if you lose your private key or your magic work. So this is quite serious and we need to warn them about 
when they decide not to back up their kids. So this is what I call hammer. We need to risk, uh, uh, notify everyone about the risk of their behavior when they are entering this space. And second is, is called sweet. It means that we encourage people to take, for example, security quiz and, and to learn what we have provided, like Safe Health Academy, uh, to learn more about what, uh, how to, uh, what is the effective measurement to keep the crypto safe. So this is what I call sweet. I think for a security project team, it's always quite difficult for, for us to keep everyone educated enough. So we have to grab every chance we have to send them the suite and also warn them about the risk coming ahead. Uh, I guess we'll continue on this topic. I think I saw a really interesting uh, post here from Fishfort. You guys said, you know, we should be giving simple security advice to customers. I mean, what would be a top tip you would give to someone in this space? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think, I think, of course, for, uh, you know, for anything comprehensive, you'd, you'd want to really sit down and, and, and work through not just your top tip or two, but uh, work through like kind of a comprehensive framework for engaging with crypto and how to handle your money and how to manage your keys. But having said that, if we had to kind of sim it down to five, um, five quick points, what we generally advise our customers to tell to the clients are uh, use a password manager, uh, turn on two, two factor authentication everywhere you can, avoid SMS two factor authentication, uh, install an open source ad blocker, install an open source anti phishing uh, plugin. Uh, and finally, segregate your, uh, as Victor mentioned uh, earlier, kind of se segregate your hot wallets and cold wallets. Keep your cold wallets safe offline, preferably in a hardware wallet, uh, and then use your web wallets just as, as hot wallets for kind of day-to-day -day trading and transactions. And I have a question specific for you as well, because I mean, you guys have dealt with phishing attacks. Uh, are there any disaster stories that, you know, someone really lost a lot of cryptocurrency or some cases that really raise your eyebrows on this? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think, uh, I mean, more than I care, care to admit, um, I think something that sticks out uh, to my mind uh, um, fairly recently is, uh, is one of the things we do as a security company, especially as a phishing security company, is encourage people to use hardware wallets uh, because it's much harder to get fish, of course, uh, or so you would think. Um, but we've seen over the last probably six, six to eight months uh, a, a huge surge in uh, phishing against uh, some very popular hardware wallet brands uh, which are basically just, you know, it looks exactly like the website. You plug in your device and it says, your device is corrupted, please put in your recovery phrase. Um, and so we've kind of defeated, uh, and I mean, we, we've tracked those funds. We're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars have been, have been stolen in single, uh, in single compromises from this. So single individuals losing hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, the, the total loss to crypto phishing is, we're talking millions and millions of dollars a week at the moment. Ouch, I didn't really realize that people would fall for that, but I think it's just that um, implicit trust in websites, right? All of a sudden, this website that looks official is telling you, hey, input your key here, and you wouldn't think, oh, this is phishing, but I'm going to go straight for that. That's kind of scary that there's millions of dollars lost, and I think this is only going to be bigger and bigger amounts as crypto gets more and more popular and as more people get into this. So I guess last question, we'll, go, we'll start off summarizing this, but for Atomic Wallet guys, I mean, you guys are software wallet. Have you guys encountered phishing attempts in the past? Have you also encountered victims that tried, that have been hacked and lost a lot of money? Yeah, actually the phishing attacks is a huge problem for everyone. And uh, also if you just, at the social engineering team, when the people are just messaging you, just messaging on different forums, like uh, offering you just to double your money or something, then it's an, it's an ethnic I mean, we usually have a huge wave of that on YouTube as well. I mean, I'm sure, not sure if you guys saw that, but there is, uh, throughout this whole weekend, we saw double your money in crypto sent to this address and this infinite number of scammers trying to do so, well organized too. So definitely agree with you there. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a huge problem for everyone. And also, the, we, we just, uh, we constantly ban phishing domains, like, like here is a atomic wallet and you can recover the wallet with the 12 ports here, or even download the fake application. And the last month we have banned three fake applications from Google Play. And it's really insane, like how Google <laughs> allowed to, to publish these applications. Yeah, and we are constantly fighting against scammers and 
yeah that's it that's yeah i would watch. say definitely like scammers they're just all over like if you look at the phishing scams they just like pop up every single day on all the platforms as you mentioned like youtube they come up like a google ads facebook you know google mm. play even app store sometimes so it's just like even if there's like you know, people reviewing applications or some products, you know, scammers still find different ways how to get in and like, you know, pretend to be a different applications. And it's different, it's definitely a challenge for products to, you know, build a product at the same time, trying to protect your brand, trying to protect all your users. It's very difficult because it's, it's time expensive and it's also like resources expensive. So it's kind of both. And you definitely want to try to make it better uh, for every developer who is out there you know, help them to also secure their applications. Yeah, I definitely think so. And I think just like what scared me when I saw these YouTube ads was like how organized they were. They redirected people to specific chat channels where they can lead and follow up. And if you just look at it, they actually dated their chat, chat channels too. So that means like they're doing this on a daily basis, just constantly churning in newbies and um, stealing their cryptocurrencies. And I think one of the things we really need to home in here, obviously, is cryptocurrency transactions are not reversible. If you ever make a mistake like that, chances are you won't get your money back. And I think that's, I guess that's a hammer for Veronica, you know, like <laughs> you got to hammer that into people and, and constantly push that forward. Where do you guys see this going? Like, so in the future, do you feel like there's even easier ways that we can try to make it easier for people to be their own bank and manage their keys? Um, do you feel like it could be something that um, we can kind of stop phishing and all these scams forever? Yeah, I'll probably start on this. Um, you know, if you look a couple of years from now, so there's first, like a first problem is like, you know, just managing keys. And I don't think they're intuitive, intuitive enough for people to even own yet. Um, like five years from now, people don't probably have any recovery phrases at all. So I think most of the technology that will be built on top will be probably built in into your phone itself. And so they will, this will kind of, will provide all the, you know, encryption, all the secure element on the phone itself that allows you to easily recover it with different like, social mechanism and it will be also very protected by the phone itself so probably in the future the technology will get better and probably on the os level itself not on the software but at the same time like there's still going to be some attacks with social engineering which is very popular but i think we can cut down most of the things just building a better technology in phones itself I definitely think so. I think um, both Samsung and Apple were talking about cryptographic wallets and keys and I think we're making our way there. Um, anywhere other ideas that we can come up with? No, I, I feel quite passive on, on this because uh, I, I used to work in the security department of one tech giant who is serving millions of, of billions of users in, in China. So uh, actually security is an endless war for me. And, and, and it, is, it is quite conflicted between owning your own bank and enjoying the freedom not to be learning the hard points of security tips. Because people are naturally, they think inherently they are lazy. They don't need, they don't want to digest any difficult terms and they, they just want to secure it and also easy to use. That's the most important point for, for the users. So I think there's always space for the scammers to leak in and, and to cheat on everyone. So I think this is an endless war, especially in the decentralized world. You need to keep your own magic word, your own passphrase, which is already difficult enough for everyone. So I think it could take even longer than we expected to see mm. real improvement made in this industry. Right. And, and I definitely agree with that. It does take a long time. And I think we have to start wrapping up the session. So I have like a one minute. I've been trying to time this talk, but guys, I, we have around one minute and I really want to wrap up a few of the um, conversation topics here. First of all, education. I think we definitely discussed that learning for everyone that cryptocurrency transactions cannot be reversed. So if you make a mistake, unfortunately, there's very little the authorities can help you with. There's no way to call a bank and decline a transaction when it comes to cryptocurrency transactions. And this is why educating yourself about why keeping this key safe is important. Second of all, one of the biggest take homes here is that there are hackers and more importantly, there are fishers that are trying to pretend to be legit companies like the companies that we have over here and our speakers, they want to pretend and use their faces to try to tell you, oh, sorry, your device is corrupted. Enter your cryptographic keys here. Never ever do that. Never tell that to anyone and no tech support will ever ask you for your cryptographic or recovery phrase. And that's important to remember throughout this. Lastly, of course, this is definitely a war that we continuously have to fight. It's not easy to tell people, you look, you gotta have education. A lot of people just go in and start 
using it. And I think something that we constantly have to do, obviously, sorry about this. This is a timer for the 25 minutes. So I'm gonna wrap this up here and then say, look guys, definitely contact everyone here. We have, Verona, we have Victor from Trust Wallet, Veronica Wang from SafePal, Mark from Fishport. We also have Constantin from Atomic Wallet. These guys are great resources. Read up on their material and the products as well. And obviously guys, ask more questions if you can. And if you also want to have more videos and tutorials about how to do that, check out boxmoney.com. I start a YouTube channel and we talk a lot about security as well. And with this, I'm gonna end up and uh, wrap up the session and thank all the speakers for coming here. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Cheers. you everyone.